Hello church, thank you for joining me today. We're in this series, Born to Lead, and you are born to lead. And today we're gonna to be talking about a vision. And it's all about where God is taking you. It's like, well, a vision, why is it important to have a vision from the Lord? Picture this, there are two Eskimos sitting on chairs fishing through ice. The fellow on the right has his line uh, through a typical opening uh, about the size of a manhole cover. You know, it's smaller. The Eskimo on the left has his line in the water also, and he's waiting patiently for a little nibble uh, on, the, on the line. But his hole is more like a crater, and it's in the shape of a whale. Now that's what I call vision. You gotta hand it to that Eskimo that, that has that big hole. He is ready. You could be sure whatever attaches itself to his hook, he's ready for it. You know, the, the thing is, is that the, a person with vision like that, they, they may take some criticism, even from the other Eskimo. It's like, how greedy can you get? Or, or talk about a show off. But really, no one could deny, and you gotta give this, this about the guy. He's thinking big. The time he spent preparing to catch that extreme catch, that the all, all the things that needed to happen, he probably wore out a number of saw blades hacking through the thick ice. There's nothing that he catches, and I mean nothing, that he won't be able to handle. From the very start of the project, he was a visionary. Now, vision becomes contagious. You can't sit very long beside a fisherman with a hole like that without enlarging your hole also. Something down inside us admires a person who stretches our faith by doing things that are filled with vision, vision from God. However, initially, such actions might appear to be foolish. That occurs when we don't know the facts behind the actions. We're just seeing the actions. For example, I heard a while, uh, some time ago, about a couple of nuns who worked as nurses in a hospital. And on the way to work, they ran out of gas, and they were already running late. They, they walked to the service station, but the service, service station didn't have any containers to put the gas in. Then one of the gals remembered that there was a, a bedpan back in the trunk of their car. So they went back, got the bedpan, put the gas in the pan, and they carried it very carefully back to the car. Can you imagine? Slosh, don't want to slosh the gas around. As the nuns were pouring the gasoline from the bedpan into the gas tank, two men drove by, and they stared in disbelief. Finally, one of them said to the other, now that takes faith. Wow, talk about faith. It appeared to be foolish. Trouble was, those doubters, the one, oh, that takes, I'm dumbfounded. They just didn't have all the facts. And you know that they were even more surprised when those nuns was cruised by them on the freeway just a couple of minutes later. So much of what we undertake lacks vision. We cut our tiny holes in the ice and make plans to go home cold and hungry. And then if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves criticizing and scoffing at those who dream great dreams that the Lord has put in their hearts and plan great things that the Lord has put in their hearts. Jesus, when he called Andrew and Simon, promised in Mark chapter 1, verse 17, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. The two fishermen probably thought too small. Luke recorded their reaction the, the time that they caught a, two boatloads full of fish. They were dumbfounded. They were at awe. But Jesus replied in Luke chapter 5, verse 10, Do not fear. From now on, you will be catching men. Oftentimes, our vision has to do with affecting the world for Christ. It seems as though Jesus realized their, their inborn fear of something sizable, he challenged their, them, he challenged them, don't be uneasy. With my help, you'll catch people just like you caught all those fish. How long has it been since you punched a hole in the ice and thrown out a line? Now, you know, I'm using that as a metaphor. You might have to break the ice with pre-Christian neighbors or colleagues at work 
family members, getting beyond the slick surface of the ice, right? Keep it with the metaphor. Talking about weather, sports, the condition of your lawn, gardening. It takes time. It also takes risk. And then you're also putting an effort into practical acts of loving compassion. Fishing for men and women, it's no casual thing. Also with our vision, are you expecting success? What we anticipate in, in this life usually is what we get. If you say, I can't do it, you're probably right, especially if you firmly believe you can't. But God says you can. So who do you intend to believe? There are, there are many, many instances in the Bible where, where we're reminded of the importance of having a, a God calling, a good and clear vision. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Then the Lord said to me, write the vision, make it clear on tablets so that anyone can read it easily. What does having a vision really mean? And what does it have to do with me and with you? So let's look at Proverbs 29, verse 18. Without vision, the people perish, but he that keeps the law is blessed. The Living Bible Version says, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild, but whoever obeys the law is joyful. The Amplified Version, one of my favorite versions says, where there is no vision, no revelation of God and his word, the people are unrestrained. But happy and blessed is he who keeps the law of God. Basically, having vision is to see what God sees, appreciate the whole picture, and to clearly see the things that God has put in our hearts, put in your hearts, and visualize them becoming a reality. So we're partnering with God. So why is it important to have a vision? Well, vision is important because it gives you purpose and direction. It helps you to determine your future, to make it a reality. You could see what God wants you to do. Most financial, family, social problems happen when people don't know their purpose or destination. They get involved in activities or in relationships or are guided by trends of the moment. They don't really have a clear vision of where they are supposed to go. It's important to have a vision to see in advance where you are going. Having a vision from the Lord will make you want to jump out of bed every morning when you see clearly all the things that God has for you. It will change you forever. There's nothing better than to know that he created you to fulfill a purpose and achieve great things. So here's five characteristics of vision, of having a vision from the Lord. Having vision is a God thing. Habakkuk 2.2. 2. Then the Lord said to me, write the vision, make it clear on tablets so that anyone can read it easily. I like Habakkuk. We're going to be referring back to that here in a little bit too. We see in the Bible that, that the vision is initiated by God and it has been given to us by him. That's why deep inside you have a sense of purpose, like your life is supposed to have a meaning and a plan. And then number two, the vision without you is useless. Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we could do the good things he planned for us long ago. You need to receive the vision. God is looking for visionary people who are determined to fulfill his mission, his vision. People that will understand what things should be done and know that all this is coming from the Lord. It's not from me. It's from God allowing me to see what he wants me to see. Then number three, the vision will be tested. James chapter one, verses two through four. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. All vision will be tested by various conflicts and adversities. 
we must allow the vision to be tested and stand the test of time. If it is from the Lord, nothing will stop us. So that's a way of proving that it is from the Lord. And then four, the vision takes time. Psalm 27, 14, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. It doesn't come immediately. Sometimes, sometimes it does. But oftentimes it's a process. It needs time to grow and mature and be implemented. The vision needs you to take care of it like a garden. You work until you see it performed. You just keep on going at it. Then number five, the final one, the vision must be communicated so that more people get involved. And once again, back to Habakkuk 2.2, make it clear on tablets so that anyone can read it easily. That means we need to share with others and some will listen and they will want to be part of, the, of that vision that God has given you. The Bible is filled with countless examples of people getting God's vision. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Jose, Jonah, Micah. Seeing God's vision for your life is, is not a crazy thing and ask God for it. And really this, this works for both the visual and the non-visual thinker. Ask God specific questions. In your quiet time, after reading the Bible and praying, just be quiet and wait for God. You could ask questions of the Lord in that time. God, is there anything you want to say to me? And then sit and wait. Or another question is, God, is there anything I need to know that I'm not thinking about? And then you sit and wait. And he wants to answer you. James chapter 1, verse 5. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. God wants you to ask him for advice. I'm, I'm here. He wants you to be specific. He's waiting for you to ask. And then second, as you're trying to think through, uh, how is God talking to me in this, this vision? Look into God's word to see what God wants to say to you. Psalm chapter 119, verse 18, open my eyes so that I may see the wonderful truths in your law. It's a good verse to pray as you open up God's word. Every answer to every problem you have is in the Bible. But you've got to read it and study it, memorize it, and meditate on it as you seek God's vision for your life, or even just today. So take another mental glimpse at those two Eskimos I started talking about. Big hole, little hole, big hole. How big is your hole that you're fishing in right now? Is it small, is it big? Ask God to help you aim for the biggest and most extraordinary vision for your life, because that will become your future. What better way to lead than to take people along with you in what God has prepared for you to do? After all, you were born to lead.